Hello and welcome back to CHGO White Sox Post Game, presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. My name is Herb Lawrence. Follow me on Twitter. It's Ecknerwall23. The guy to my left is Vinny Duber. At Vinny Duber on Twitter is the way you can follow him there and us. CHGO underscore White Sox on the tweeter machines. Oh, it's so bad. Hi, KPW. You guys got your three wins. Good job, guys. Before we start the show and all that badness. <laughs> oh, God, What's just... the matter, Herb? You're not feeling so great after that one? I mean, they could have lost earlier than that. They were jerks. <laughs> Wanted to invite you guys all out to our tailgate we're going to have on June 22nd. 11.30 is when it opens up at guaranteed rate lot B. It's $25 for you to get to the tailgate and into the game. So please go. We have it right here on our YouTube page. We have it listed on all of our uh, socials. So go and look at our socials. It's also on allchgo.com on the main page. So go there, buy your tickets now. Come and commiserate with us before that game versus the Blue Jays because you know we're probably going to lose that one too. Wow. I'm just so irritated right now. You're, Vinny, you're doing a good job. I'll I, say know, that. <laughs> I know. I uh, know one of the uh, texters asked us to talk about Star Wars, and it was uh, our guy Baloney. So let's go with this one. What's worse, the White Sox bats or Jar Jar Binks? Mm. Well, see, that's a very good question, and apparently that might be the answer right there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Jar Jar Binks is not good, but... When I, I mean, when that movie came out, I was like nine, so I probably thought it was hilarious at the time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the White Sox bats are real bad right now. Oh. They're, they're prequel level bad right now, Herb. <laughs> that's, that's, they're, this is a real attack of the clone situation with the, uh, with the White Sox offense right now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what did we what did we talk about earlier in the week, right? We were like, man, you know what they need? They need some innings where they string some hits together, get some runs together. They had one of those. They had one of those today. Just one of they them. They continue doing just that. Just one of them. They did that yesterday. They did the day before. It's yeah. just so af- annoying. I'm, I mean, I like the fight in the eighth inning, but then Raylo comes and throws gasoline on the fire that's already been burning forever, and it's been bad. So uh, let's just go with a recap of this game. I mean, the White Sox started off the game really well. They had a plan. It seemed like they wanted to attack Alec Manoa early in the count. You see the first pitch of the game, Lurie Garcia with a single. I was like, man, Tony, Tony Russa, what a damn genius. <laughs> then Luis Robert, single down the, down the third base line. All right, there we go. And eventually the White Sox become the White Sox. Moncada pitches, pops out in the first pitch. Abreu strikes out. We get a walk from Gavin Sheets on four straight pitches. Then Manoa throws three straight balls. The first two, the umpire called strike, oh, called balls. But the third one, I don't know if Steven can pop that up, but he's showing it to us. You guys saw the game. The ball was outside. They call the strike. It's 2-1, and eventually you get the strikeout from Manoa uh, against a, a Grandal in that first inning. That was the best shot for the White Sox to score because after that, Manoa retired 16 straight White Sox. It was just a dominant performance from Alex, Alec Manoa up until the eighth inning. What do you think about the White Sox first inning and how they went through it? I mean, it was a little bit of, of good fortune, obviously, but that's what you need sometimes to get going, obviously, in, in a baseball game. You know, who knows, uh, you know, a, a good diving effort in center field on the on the ball Laurie hit, but that was a good hit. You know, Matt Chapman uh, not able to get rid of it over there at third base on, yeah. on, the, on the Robert hit. Maybe, you know, that guy's probably the best defensive third baseman in, in the game. Mm-hmm. The He might make that amazing play uh, from time to time, but the White Sox benefited and then really... Couldn't do anything after that. I mean, Manoa was Manoa after the first inning, um, and then, and you know, the, and then they got to him. They finally got to him in in the eighth, but you know, just not enough. And and that's really the thing is just like you can't you can't just fall asleep for whole stretches of the game like that. Yes. I mean, listen, this is a good pitcher, a great pitcher, and 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 he's done this kind of thing to a lot of lineups. They're not alone, but um, you know, as we keep saying every every single time we pop on here. This lineup should be better than this. This lineup should be doing much more than this. And I understand there's injuries. Um, you had a lot of guys. You had some some guys in there today that are were not expected to be among your big boppers. But hey, Larry got Larry Garcia got two hits. He did. Uh, Reese McGuire got a hit. You know, I mean, like 
where are some of these other guys to to come up here? You know, where was where was Gavin Sheets? No hits. You talked about the walk, obviously. Where was Yasmani Grandal? No hits. You know, these are the guys Ankata that are supposed to be doing finally it. in the eighth. Yeah, but that was like a broken bat shot over the shortstop's head. But yeah, you're right. It's just so few and far between when they could string together hits and get something going for their offense. And I saw Snake Eyes says the White Sox bats are worse than Jar Jar Banks. <laughs> Uh, at least Jar Jar goes away at some point. It moves, sorry, I can't say it. At some point, but the team sucking never does. So, yeah, um, the White Sox was the, the microcosm for me of the White Sox season was you're having a great starting pitching performance, a good starting pitching performance from Johnny Cueto. Certainly the best they got in this series. Exactly. Yeah. And then the third inning, he gives up a double to Tapia, who's been hitting the ball really hard this series the last two games. It's a double. You You, you could tip the cap. He should have probably been out. The throw from Gavin Sheets from right field was pretty solid. It bounces a little high on the turf, and Lurie misses the ball. That ball goes to pretty much the the wall in left field, and so Tapia keeps on going to third. That's the thing that the White Sox did. It just looked ugly, and you get a good pitcher performance, and you just can't execute. But then, because he's a magician and because he's a professional pitcher, you get Johnny Cueto only giving up one run in that inning. Because he's a good pitcher, and eventually got a GIDP because he hit the next guy, a GIDP to get the runner in from Espinal, getting a GIDP to score Tapia, and gets out with only one run scored. What would you assess uh, Johnny Cueto's pitching performance today versus the a nice hitting Blue Jays team who scored a bunch of runs in this series? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was the best starting pitching performance the White Sox got this series. Uh, you know, only three uh, earned runs uh, in in what I guess six, six innings. innings. So. It's a quality start, as they as they say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not the problem. The problem is not the pitching. I think the good news is that, you know, Johnny Cueto, we're trying to figure out who he is, what he's going to do for these White Sox. Is he going to end up being the guy who's the much better option uh, the, than, than Dallas Keuchel? Obviously, Dallas Keuchel was pitching so poorly that a lot of guys looked like a better option. But but you got to sustain it, you're right? You, you've got to be able to say Johnny Cueto going out there every fifth day is going to be uh, a, a real positive for this team. And we're trying to figure out if that's the case. So far, it's been the case. And when your starting pitcher only gives up three earned runs in six innings, you should be able to help him out a bit. And and the White Sox didn't get on their offensive horse until the eighth, and uh, and it ended up being nowhere near enough once the bullpen blew up in the fifth or in the eighth in the bottom of the eighth. So, and then that combination comes back. It's Tapia who scores on the Espinal single or double to right center in the fifth inning, and then the real big blow for all of us is you know he's cruising through five pretty much two earn, two runs one earned. And then the home run by Teoscar Hernandez after the double by Vlad Guerrero really puts uh, an exclamation point for me. I was like, four nothing. I mean, we got to score four runs. That's going to be impossible. Sox came with the fake rally there. But with that home run with uh, uh, Teoscar Hernandez, I was like, okay, this game is over. Hurry up and lose because we're not scoring four runs. What were your thoughts after that Teoscar Hernandez home run off of Johnny Quaid on the sixth? Yeah, I mean, the offense was was silent, completely silent. It hadn't done anything since that first inning. 16 guys in a row, like you mentioned, retired uh, by Manoa there after the Sheets walk in the first inning to load the bases. But, you know, what, what, what can you expect? How can you not feel like that as someone who's watched this team over and over again saying four runs is a, is a challenge for this offense right now? And again, the shock of that statement being true uh, think about what we thought about this team in the in the preseason. Um, you know, even if you were disappointed with the with the off season and the the additions that were and more specifically weren't made, you still got this stacked lineup full of guys. And uh, yeah, injuries have knocked a few of them out. Obviously, um, that that is still very much a problem for this White Sox team. But the guys that are there are not doing it. It'd be one thing. It'd be one thing if Grandal and Abreu. You know, and Andrew Vaughn were all hitting 300 and, and all just crushing the ball. Moncada was 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 doing great, but it's like, oh man, TA and Aloy are still out. You know, how are they going to function right now? But it's not. It's just two of those guys are are, are doing well. You know, so ugh, I I don't Wayne. I don't know what does it take to wake up the bats. <laughs> That is the million-dollar question, and I guess whoever figures it out is probably going to get a million dollars because the White Sox will be that relieved that their offense has finally turned things around. Uh, you know, I saw another comment saying, when is it? When does it stop being early? Uh, it's stopped being early. It's after Memorial Day. I think the only thing that you can say now is that it still is like 
the, the comment is not, it's still early, but there's plenty of time, which is true, but it's the same kind of description, right? I mean, it, it's not early anymore. This is a third of the season in the books, and uh, I mean, they got to figure this out. I have no I have no idea, Wayne, how, how they're going to figure it out, but they have to, or things are going to look like this for another four months, and that's that would just be... Terrible. That would be it, it's it's I mean it's terrible for White Sox fans absolutely but it's like h- how could this happen yeah. with this roster how could this happen look how good the pitching is right now how could this happen how can this team be under five hundred um, it's it's shocking and for a little positivity that eighth inning the White Sox had it showed that they don't quit they could have easily cashed this game in at four nothing said hey. It's been good. Let's go out to Tampa Bay and have a better time with the Rays. But they didn't. They have they got runs, three runs with two outs in that inning. So Robert with a double to deep center scores Garcia and Maguire. And then you get the broken bat single by Yoan Moncada while it's not enough. That was the only time this year that Alec Manoa has given up three earned runs or more in a start. So, you know, if you weren't looking for a silver lining... There it is. The White Sox offense got more earned runs off of Alec Manoa than nine other teams that he previously faced. It's not enough. It's never going to be enough. Three runs in a game are never going to be enough when you're averaging 3.6. So I need the White Sox to do this earlier in the game and then string together, as Vinny says, another one of these innings and then another one of these innings. And then like the Blue Jays, okay, the team came back and got within one run. Cool, we're going to score four and put this shit out of, out of uh, distance. So it was a bad game for the White Sox overall. Very frustrating. I know you White Sox fans are out there just cursing this team. We're two. Like, we really don't even want to talk about this game because it's a broken record. When are they going to start hitting? When is this team going to do this? Are they going to fire somebody to get better? I don't know. I don't know any of those answers. We're just here to entertain you for the next 45 <laughs> minutes because – this is frustrating for us, too. Like, we're here every night watching this crap. Like, you guys don't have to. I appreciate you guys being here right now. And people who are listening on the podcast a day later, thank you very much. Because it's, uh, it's a task to talk about these uh, some bitches. We're here, to, we're here to entertain. We need to start coming up with, like, you know, some, choreo- things. some like choreographed dance moves. Maybe we'll get, do a, a musical break every night. Maybe it would be a good thing, a, a, a nice song to, to entertain everybody. Uh, we can learn how to juggle. Um, that seems hard, though. Magic. Maybe we could do some magic. I'm not sure. What do you think? I don't know how to do any of those things. All I know how to do is <laughs> chug beers really fast. That, I mean, I don't know if I'm that's sure going to be, will- like, entertaining. I mean, I can chug beers pretty fast and water. You know, that has to be alcohol. <laughs> it can be beer. My man, Little Yumper, with a four ninety nine super chat. I'm here for you, Herb. For the Herb. Fire. Boo, boo, boo. Thank you, my man. It's, uh, it's a thing. I mean, I chose this life, and I chose this life because I thought that the White Sox were going to be a better team. They have not played like the team that we expected, and that's very frustrating. I'm sure all those 26 players in that clubhouse are – even more frustrated than I am because they're like, what is going on here? Like the Blue Jays are good, but they're not beating us, sweeping us good. Same thing with other teams that have beat them this year. It's not the Guardians who, by the way, the Guardians have taken over second place from the White Sox by a half a game because the White Sox have lost another game. And the Minnesota Twins, who I told you are no damn good, got swept by the Detroit Tigers. So, the division's still there. That's what's frustrating. I wish that we had a team that was just running away from the White Sox so we can just focus on something else. But, no, the Minnesota Twins are, hey, come come and get this division, please. We don't want it. We're good. Y'all don't want it either? All right, I guess we'll go to the playoffs and get beat by the Yankees again. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but, yeah, let's talk about uh, – let me do this read before we, uh, we talk about something more depressing. <laughs> the best way to support CHGO. I know that's – man – Herb is out here selling CHGO. Yeah, Herb's really keeping the viewers locked yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It's to download the PointsBet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you'll get two risk-free bets for up to $2,000. But that's not it. If you make a $50 or more the first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, including Vinny Duber's great work, Adam Hogue's great work, Nicholas Moriano's great work on the Bears, all of that stuff. And you even get a free T-shirt if you're watching on the YouTube channel. I have the Brawler Sox shirt on. It's the Sox. Uh, if you're watching, it's the Sox shirt right there. And the logo right below Vinny's leg. 
So you'll get a free T-shirt, your choice of the, from the CHGO locker room. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO locker, all for making a first-time $50 deposit at PointsBet. If you have any questions, you can email PointsBet at pointsbet at allchgo.com, and we'll help you out. Your home for live in-play betting just got even better, introducing PointsBet's new feature, Live NBA Same Game Parlay. For the first time ever, you can build your perfect live NBA Same Game Parlay only on PointsBet. Combine your favorite bets anytime during the game. Want more? You can also boost your live same game parlays. Watch live, parlay live, and boost live with points bet. I believe the NBA final is starting tonight, the first game for tonight. So do that on points bet. And now online sign up is available in Illinois. You can download the points bet app right now and register your account from start to finish, all from your phone. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 522 47. Zero, zero. Let's go over Johnny Cueto's pitching line today and the both starting pitchers pitching line today and check out what he did. I mean, four starts this year for Johnny Cueto. And each of those starts, he went six innings at least at the very minimum. The last start versus the Cubs, he gave up a couple runs at the end, so it wasn't a quality start. So three out of the four times that Johnny Cueto has taken the bump for the White Sox, he's given them a quality start. He's given them a chance to win the game each time. I have to apologize to him because I didn't expect this. When they're saying Johnny Cueto signed for a minor league deal, it's like, okay, a minor league deal. No one else wants him. No one else is going to give him a major league deal. He's watched. He's garbage. But Johnny Cueto is coming out, and he has shown me something. He is a pitcher's pitcher. He knows how to pitch. Even though he doesn't have the electric stuff still, that man is giving the White Sox a chance to win every fifth day. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were saying is like, you know, it came down to they're going to throw a dart at a at a, at a at a at a dartboard basically and hope they hit something that's better than Dallas Keuchel, and they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and not only did they do that, they found a pitcher who is going to, like you mentioned, give them a chance to win every time he takes the ball, and that's all you can ask for. Uh, um, he might not be turning in the dominant performances that I think White Sox fans have gotten used to seeing from Lucas Giolito and Dylan Cease and. This year, Michael Kopech, and certainly when Lance Lynn comes back, he'll be in that category as well. But, you know, those four guys are the guys you're going to throw out there, you know, in a what they hope is a playoff series. <laughs> uh, but uh, Johnny Cueto is the guy who's going to make sure that every fifth game they've got a shot to win, and that's what you need in order to get to that playoff series. Um, the, the pitching has, has done its part so far. The hitting has not, and so um, – when we say the word playoff, we have to use the playoff. word we have to use the word if to go along with it. <laughs> if not, just go full on Jim Mora. And I would like to go, uh, Stephen, to the Johnny Cueto pitch mix if you can. Threw way more changeups than any other pitch. Thirty four changeups today. He threw his sinker twenty five times, slider twelve, cutter seven, and his four seam fastball six times. Pretty much league average around his uh, his uh, swing swings and misses and whiffs or his uh, caught. Uh, Called strikes and his whiffs, 26% on his change up, 32%. The 29 is the league average, 25 on his slider, 14 on his cutter, and they saw his uh, fastball perfectly. So <laughs> that's why he shelved it early. I mean, he's got stuff, but he doesn't have the premium stuff. I don't know when this is going to run out, but for right now, Johnny Cueto has the fifth, star, has the fifth spot, starter spot when Lance Lynn comes at, back after his uh, stint down there in the minor leagues. It's good to see that. You got one thing right. Great job by Rick Hahn. You got one thing right. It took you into the season to get this right, but you got one thing right with Johnny Cueto as our fifth starter. And DFA in Dallas Keiko, man, I couldn't love that anymore. And our guy Clark Renner, $5 Super Chat. It appears we need to, what is that, tip our caps to the other team. Well, quite a lot. Can you please demonstrate the appropriate form? For your $5. Just tip it like this, <laughs> Clark. For those people on the uh, podcast, like, what is going on? I don't know. It's hey, it's tough, Clark, man. Every single time, yeah, we're like, oh, this team is not hitting right now. And then the White Sox come, and they start to hit. Even though the starting pitcher has been pretty good, except for the first two starts of this game, they've been, for on the whole, pretty good the whole season. They've been pretty great, I would argue, yeah. Yeah, and they've yeah. been holding up this team. And that's why I think that Lucas and... And uh, Michael Kopech the other day, just their backs are hurt because they've been carrying this offense and this team to the 23 wins that they have right now. Now the three games under 500. Now what more can be said about the starting pitching? They're great. We have to tip the cap 
to the offense again. Now we got to go to Tampa Bay and lose three more games. And then, the, oh, yeah, I forgot. Sean Anderson, who's not here, he's on assignment, said the weak Dodgers are coming into U.S. Cellular this week, who did get swept by the Pirates this week at home, whatever. But hell's coming to breakfast with the White Sox. They're right in the middle of it, and I just don't see it ending. I don't. It's going to be real tough. Maybe when you guys join us for a June 22nd game at U.S. Cellular Field for our tailgate in the pregame, They'll beat the Blue Jays that day, and we'll be on our way because the next day, it's the Baltimore Orioles. We'll be without Vinny that day, though. Sad. What? On what the day? next day, the 23rd, and June 23rd, because Vinny's about to get married. <laughs> the uh, That's Yeah, I'll be there. For, I think I'll be there for that first game of that Baltimore series on oh. Thursday. But then, yes, I have the, I have the weekend off for wedding-related endeavors. And you're not going to guaranteed rate for your uh, bachelor party. I am not going to guaranteed rate field for my bachelor party, oh. hopefully. That is the hope. Who knows where we, where, we, where one of those things ends up. But, uh, yeah, if I have to go to work for my bachelor party, that would be less than ideal. Vinny, you know the history of baseball, correct? It, all of it. Everything that's ever happened. Okay. <laughs> there have been a number of teams that have the negative run differential that the White Sox have that have made the playoffs. Can you give a guess of how many teams in the history of baseball that have made the playoffs – with a negative run differential. Just made the playoffs. Just made the playoffs. Didn't even have to win a series or, nope. or win a game. Nope. Uh, made the playoffs. Negative run differential. Yep. Single digits, I bet. It is single yeah. digits. Look at Vinny. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> I'll say six. It is nine. Okay. But you are kind of correct because three of them came in the shortened 2020 season. Oh, it was okay. the Marlins with a negative 41, the Brewers with a negative 17 run differential, and the Blue Jays with a negative 10 differential. So there have been nine teams. So, yes, White Sox fans, it looks bleak right now. And they're negative, I believe, 55 uh, run differential right now. It looks bleak. The 2007 Diamondbacks had a negative 20 run differential. The Padres of 05 had negative 42. So we need to aim, and we know there's teams out there. There, it's an outlier. It's the anomaly. It's not the. It's the exception, not the rule. But have faith, White Sox fans. Have faith. There have been nine teams, and your White Sox could be the tenth if they get their stuff <laughs> going. Because this, this, I like I told you, this division is trash. Everybody doesn't want to win this. They don't want to get beat by another team in the in the playoffs just to go there. So we have faith that the White Sox can get the job done, eventually get their stuff together, but we don't know when. It's just frustrating to know that this team is much better than they are and they're not playing to their potential. I just wish, like I said in the pregame before, I wish it was the opposite, that the starting pitchers were getting bombed and our offense was doing the things that they needed to do because at least those games would be fun. They would be very, very entertaining now, this is boring. Until the eighth inning, we were pretty much, ugh. News this game doing? ending. Just dragging ass to the fucking eighth inning. It was terrible. Well, here, here's what I'll say. We got to, you know, not just today, but throughout the week and, and all the time now because we're, hey, we're in June. Um, we're getting quite trade deadline questions, right? Trades. This is the time of year that this gets started talking about. Um, the White Sox right now, their record would not indicate that in a normal, under normal circumstances, they would be buyers, right? Because they're sub 500, that kind of thing. That being said, with the expectations this team had at the beginning of the season, I don't think there's any way they're selling no. anything. I mean, no. they would have to lose every game for the rest of June in order to fall in that category. They're going to try to salvage this, and now that might mean trying to salvage it with a lot of guys that are currently employed by the Chicago White Sox. But that being said... We talked about it. I mean, there's there's quite a hole at second base right now. Oh, yeah. They got to go find a second baseman. And, and, I mean, I don't think it's Yolbert Sanchez, right? I mean, are we all, uh, you know, is that what the, I know. the eggs are in the Yolbert Sanchez <laughs> basket right now? Yeah. That doesn't sound You're, like a good place to keep your eggs, guys. <laughs> we're very desperate, so we're reaching for minor leaguers who never even taste the major leagues. Um, Yeah, it's very bleak right now, and... That's the only thing, though. We do not have a minor league to trade from. So usually you can have, okay, we need a second baseman. We got this big-time prospect down there. We could trade and get a major league baseball player. I don't think Jimmy Lambert's going to land a, a second baseman that's going to start for the White Sox that's going to be good enough. Absolutely and, not. <laughs> and we saw we saw Carl, uh, Cesar Hernandez 
play awesome for the Indians last year, play terrible for the White Sox, and now he's playing awesome for the Nationals. Maybe it's just something. Maybe it's the White Sox. You get them, and it's like, ugh, we're not good anymore. Except for my guy, Tempera. He was good. Tempura, as maybe, uh, as, uh, as uh, Ozzy called him. Tempura. Maybe there's like a glare it, at guaranteed rate field. Like it's when you right play second. second base, it's just like shining in your eyes constantly the entire time. Uh, that's really the only explanation I can come up with. But no, I mean, yeah, what what are what are they gonna do? I don't I don't you know these are questions usually people are asking me, and I'm not sure I have you know I'm I'm not sure I have the answers right now. But I can't see them doing anything but trying to improve the team at, at the at the trade deadline. It's just like you mentioned. How how are they gonna do it? They don't have these prospects that they can wheel and deal in a big trade like you usually see at the end of July. It, it I mean it would have to come from. The, the, the guys they took in the first two rounds last year, right? Yeah. It would have to be Montgomery or Kath because those are the guys with the biggest upside, but they're so far off that you better be getting somebody from a team that is not planning on being good for a while. And I'm Or does to, it need to be, or does it need a shortstop or a second baseman to be good for, for a while, I guess. I'm trying to think if Rick Hahn would hold on to those guys because they're, they're prospects that are you know highly thought of and maybe eventually they'll be on the major league squad, but they're years away from it. Right. But he just wants to throw his chips in right now because he knows that this might be uh, the best opportunity for them to strike right now. And maybe Colson Montgomery will be coming onto a rebuilding team when he gets to the major leagues. So might as well throw those chips in as there are best options because like the Jerry Kel- Jared Kellys and all those guys haven't progressed as yet. You know, progression's not linear and to develop's not linear. So those guys haven't gone where the White Sox wanted them to. Cespedes or Colas, I mean, I think the idea. Fine. Well, I think the idea is that Colas is probably playing right field next year, right? <sighs> I mean, I can't. I mean, you don't sign a guy like that with that ex- with the experience he had and the and the hype that he had and not pencil him in somewhere, right? I mean, I mean Cespedes, I know, has been a little up and down in the minors in terms of production, but but Colas obviously had the bigger profile. Uh, you you got to wonder if he's a guy that is going to be part of the 2023 team. I can't believe we're already talking about that. But I mean, they've put us in this position. I don't know if Rick Hahn would actually pull triggers on any of these people, on Colson Montgomery, on, T- on West Cath, Oscar Colas, or Yoki Cespedes. If I was him, I would be putting everything in to get a second baseman, get a person that can play right field well, but consistently, here's the, well, but, please. But wait, but wait. But if the team is, if the team is, and and that's a phenomenal point that Sports Genius 38 makes, you know what I mean? The it, There's season left. There's a lot of season left. It, it's it's not it's not over. But um, I think that you, you say he'd, he'd, you know, put all the chips in right now. Well, the, look at how the team is playing. You're going to, you know what I mean? Like, don't you... Don't you, if the team is still playing like this at the trade deadline, I mean, what are the chips? I mean, why are you, why would you willingly give up those chips? I mean, you think, you think who's, which, what second baseman is out there that's going to not just fill the hole at second base, but turn the whole team around? Yeah, Yeah, I I was thinking about that. There's only a handful of second basemen that would really fit the criteria that everyone in this chat wants as far as, you know, being a big time producer at second. And, you're not getting Whit Merrifield inside the division. Could tell Marte just signed an extension. You're not going to get somebody like that, likely. So who is the guy out there that everyone wants to get? I, I can't think of one. Well, and not only that, but listen, the problem the White Sox are facing right now is that the guys that were supposed to be good aren't living up to their expectations. The guy who was supposed to be good, the massive contract of all free agent second baseman last year, Marcus Semien, is terrible for the Texas Rangers right now. Maybe they want to trade him. <laughs> you eat the rest of that contract, hey, just hoping that he turns it around. Steven, can you uh, Photoshop Marcus Simeon in a White Sox jersey? I don't think I don't think you even that. need to hover over his uh, head on Baseball Reference. It might just pop right up. <laughs> we could get an old picture of yeah, really. White Sox. Yeah, um, Oscar Colas is doing all right down in a single A, uh, 254, 321, and a 772 OPS. So. It's going to be tough for him to be in the major leagues by next year with these type of numbers, especially a corner outfielder, right fielder. But yes, they prof- they profile him as a major league guy eventually. And I don't know how far Yolki Cespedes is from the majors, but I'm kind of tired of depending on people from this own their own uh, farm system because yeah, Tim's great and Andrew Vaughn are, are great, but 
Gavin Sheets is no great shakes. He's fine. He's probably a 4A player, which is much better than I can ever be. And so I'm not talking about the man himself, but he's not a major league right fielder. He has a decent arm. He can field it when, when it's hit to him for the most part, but he has shown you that his second year of major league playing, he's not ready for it. I mean, there's so many guys in this lineup. I mean, having Larry Garcia being the leadoff hitter, even though he was two for four today, is not a good thing. Having Josh Harrison take any at-bats for your team was a bad mistake. It was, he's a good defensive player, but you need it more in a championship window. They didn't strike when they when they had the chance to do it. Now, I know Rick Hunt didn't think the team was going to be this, but maybe getting a free agent that was a little bit better than Josh Harrison might have sparked this team. Might have been doing a little bit better than Josh Harrison and Lurie Garcia are doing right now at second base. That's all I'm saying. Like, have have all your bases covered and go over the process. Like, yes, Jerry's a little tight with the money, but he's got a payroll that's in the top ten. He gave him money, and we decided to spend it on the bullpen. And two of the three, or two two of the guys who we spent big money on the bullpen were not available in this Toronto series. It would have been great to have Kendall Graveman in this series. Maybe in that eighth inning when it's four to three, instead of pitching Ray Lowe again. Kendall Graveman, they knew it. They knew that Kendall Graveman could not pitch in Toronto. They knew his, his stance on that, and that's Kendall Graveman's prerogative to do that. But this is a baseball team. You got to be counted on when you're va- when you're ready to pitch. I won't give Dylan Cease that because he pitched on Sunday and he'll probably pitch um, what next either Saturday or Sunday against the Tampa Bay Rays. Fine, but Kendall Graveman has no excuse there, and the White Sox had no excuse of signing him. And yeah, it's only one game, but he missed the game, and it made the whole bullpen's experience really bad today. You have Raylo in the game. You have Jimmy Lambert pitching. You have Aaron Bummer coming out early for an eight inning, uh, eight pitch at bat or uh, outing today because he has to pitch this weekend. It's just enough. I just so many things are wrong with the White Sox right now. It's on the field. It's off the field. It's hitting. It's bullpen. Sometimes it's starting pitcher. It's manager, general manager, the owner. When is it going to end? Like, why do we? Why do we? We didn't put ourselves up for this. It's so frustrating that the White Sox are where they are. 23 and 26, unacceptable. It's just, (sighs) infuriating is the wrong word because I'm past that. It's like you get to a level, you can't just stay there. And now I'm just like resigned. Well, it's like that the White Sox are bad, but I know that they're going to eventually be good. I'm just, can I do the click thing? You know, movie click. Oh, yeah, cinematic classic Click. Never seen Star Wars. Never seen Star Wars, but he'll reference the Adam Sandler movie Click. Classic movie Click. Yeah. Fast forward to when they turn good. That's what I want. And and Christopher Walken. Come on now. (laughs) One One of our greatest thespians. But, Vinny, as a person who's covering it, has no skin in the game otherwise, how does it feel to you to watch a game where the White Sox are playing? It's just frustrating for me. How is it for you? Well, I'll, I'll, I mean, I've, I've used the word over and over again. It's shocking, right? It's shocking to see this because you know what this offense is capable of doing. Um, a lot of people are uh, using hyperbole and saying like, oh my God, this is the rebuild all over again. No, but we watched an awful lot of games like today's during the rebuild, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, you know what I mean? Like this was, this is the thing when you were throwing lineups out there that you couldn't do any better than the lineups that were being thrown out there but they were not able to get the job done. You know, back in the the 100 loss season and the 95 loss season that that Rick Renneria oversaw, um, that you've got now a team that has been built to the point of generating such excitement, such expectations that when they say the they want to win the World Series at the start of the year, you go, yeah, okay, that cool. makes sense, right? And it's it's not it's not coming together where is it what 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 is it where where is that thing that made us all believe that this team was capable of winning the world series because i think even when they finished the regular season last year yeah the astros were really good and maybe no not many people thought they were going to beat the astros but everybody looked around and said yeah, the White Sox are one of the best teams in baseball. Yes. They had the best rotation in the American League during the regular season. Their lineup maybe was was not performing uh, for, specifically from a power standpoint the way everybody thought they were in 2021 compared to what they did in 2020. But hey, look, there's Tim Anderson, and there's Jose Abreu, and there's Luis Robert, and there's Yasmani Grandal. And you can go on and on and on and say, 
those guys could 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 do some damage in the playoffs. Right now, the playoffs start tomorrow. Let's say the White Sox, you know, record is different, right? Let's say they, they play better, like you say they're going to do, and they and they win the AL Central. Is there anything that you're seeing right now besides the pitching, which of course plays the biggest role in the playoffs? But does this is this lineup telling you anything that they could be one of the best teams in baseball? I mean, they they, they are a far cry from what they were expected to be right now, and the the solution to getting to where they were expected to be is just wait. Hmm. You know, I mean, like, and that might be it, and that might work, mm-hmm. but. It's it's a tough it's a tough answer to hear that's for sure. <sighs> Let me talk about Owen Owen, which stands for only what you need. Owen is a hundred percent plant based protein shake that gives you nutrition that works as hard as you do. All their products are free of artificial ingredients, allergen free, no gluten or dairy, easily digestible. And I just had one in the in this frustrating game, so it kind of calmed me down. I've had a strawberry banana one. I had that this morning. And then I just like, I just want to taste a different one. So I tried their vanilla one. Mercy. I tell you what, it's all good. And I first heard about Owen from the Chicago Bears quarterback. Have you heard of this guy? His name is Justin Fields. Oh, Ju- Justin Fields. Okay. Justin Fields. Justin that Fields? Used to, that's the store that used to be on, on State Street, right? <laughs> now it's called Macy's. Yeah. Um, who follows a plant-based diet. Owen and CHGO have partnered up to give you an awesome offer. You can get 20% off your first purchase at liveowen.com. That is L-I-V-E-O-W-Y-N.com. Use the code CHGO20. Join me and Justin Fields and try Owen only what you need. The thing is about what you were just talking about, they had good at bats early and late versus Alec Manoa. That middle was just trash. It was a trash sandwich with good bread. So... <laughs> You had him on the ropes in the first inning. Unfortunately, you did not score. And then in the eighth inning, you got another good effort from them. So what you're saying about going into the playoffs and facing good pitchers, which they faced good pitchers, Alec Manoa and Kevin Gausman, and they did pretty well versus the guys eventually. Like, you don't have to wait until the eighth inning when he's tired to get all these runs against them. So, yes, the starting pitcher is is good. If they go to the playoffs, I'll take these four when they get uh, Lance Lynn over most teams in the league, maybe not the Mets. But this well, if they're the, playing the Mets in the playoffs, they've figured something out. Oh, that'd be so great <laughs> if they played the nine Mets. They would they would get smoked, but you know, they're, they're not my favorite squadron that day. Um but I saw some positivity out today. Luis Robert, two for four. We saw two for four from Louis Garcia. Even though it was a bloop hit, one for four for Yoan Moncada, one for four for uh Jose Bray, who's been hitting all over all over all around. So I'll take a positive out of this. I've always used this analogy. Sometimes basketball players just need to see the ball go through the hoop, and then they'll start going because the confidence builds off of that. Maybe Yoan Moncada can go off of the RBI single he had in the eighth, and maybe Yasmani Grandal with the walk he had late because he wasn't giving up in the ninth inning. He took his walk, and then maybe he sees that, okay, cool. I did what I need to do now. I'm going to become Yohan, uh, uh, Yasmani Grandal. Any validity to that? Any uh, thoughts on uh, just hitting, having a hit that goes through and having confidence going through uh, to the Tampa Bay series? I mean, it's certainly better than the alternative, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, these guys say uh, they use that phrase a lot, right? It only takes one. Sometimes it only takes one and they can get it going. Uh, we'll see if that's the case. Uh, Yoan Moncada needs to be hitting a lot, lot, lot better Ooh. than he is. Yasmani Grandal needs to be hitting a lot, lot, lot better than he is. Um, but what have we seen uh, when both of those guys have, have struggled to, to put the bat on the ball in the past? They can use their ability uh, to to walk, to, to, to help themselves out, and to make themselves still be productive players. Yasmani Grandal did that through a vast stretch of last season where – yeah, he was still hitting under 200, but his on-base percentage was up around 400. If he can be that guy again, then he's he's not the, you know, the hole in the middle of the lineup that he has been for the for this season. Now we saw uh, you know, uh, some some reporting from Daryl Van Scowen of the of the Sun Times who was up there in Toronto talking to uh Yasmani Grandal today and say and and Grandal was saying that surgery that he had on his knee in the offseason 
is kind of still hanging around. Not that, uh, you know, the recovery takes six to eight months, uh, uh, you know, to get back to 100%, to get back to normal. He, you know, he's not a guy that makes excuses. He's been out there playing every day for the last uh, two months. But, um, you know, that's a guy who's not at 100%. Added on to the heap of the injury problems that these that this team is facing right now. Aloy Jimenez was supposed to hit 40 home runs for this team this year, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he's been sitting out with a hamstring injury. Um, Tim Anderson, the guy that makes him go, he's on the injured list right now. Lance Lynn, the guy who finished third in the AL Cy Young vote last year, he's still working his way back, has not thrown a pitch in a major league game this season. So uh, the injuries are a big deal, and, and and I don't think people can watch this team every day and say uh, this is the uh, complete White Sox team, right? They're, they have not been complete yet. Um, but, made his ink. But – you know, they, they're still not hitting. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something positive. Now that they leave Tampa or Toronto, they go to Tampa, they don't have to face tough pitchers anymore. Oh, no. Rue McClanahan's on the bump tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Shane McClanahan with his 5-2 and two and 2.01 ERA versus our guy, Vince Velasquez, who has to assume the fifth starter role because of Dallas Keuchel's being DFA'd this weekend. It'll be Velasquez McClanahan. Sorry, my pages is frozen up. I'm trying to see the matchups for Saturday. Saturday will be Dylan Cease back on the bump versus Rasmussen, who's got a 5-2 record with 3.44 ERA, and Lucas Giolito taking the bump this weekend versus the Tampa Bay Rays. How do you like that pitching matchups for the weekend and this TBA for the Tampa Bay Rays on Sunday? Uh, I mean, certainly on on Saturday and Sunday, uh, the White Sox are throwing two of their guys who have been among the best pitchers in uh, in the in the AL this year. So that's something very positive for them. Uh, Vince Velasquez, we'll see. Uh, you know, he's a guy who's had a couple uh, positive moments pitching for the White Sox this year, but I think the numbers speak for themselves, and, uh, you know, that ERA is up near five and a half. So uh, he's got to be a guy who can go out there, give you some innings, not give up too many runs, um, and, and maybe that looks like more of a bullpen day, you know, now that he's been – shuffled out there maybe he's not expecting to g- take the ball and go seven uh obviously he's a starter with a starter's past and he's going to want to do that but he doesn't have to do that uh you know what I mean Lucas and Dylan maybe that could be the the expectations uh, uh for them now moving forward this season now that they've kind of gotten past that that coming off of that shortened spring training uh but yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes obviously the as we've mentioned, talking about the pitching matchups and talking about the starting pitching has not been an issue. I think the White Sox are to the point where, obviously, Vince Velasquez is filling in for Lance Lynn now uh, until he comes back. But once Lance comes back, the White Sox are going to be in the position where every time, every single day, they're going to be confident that they can win a game because of the guy on the mound. How many times this year has 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 uh, you know Rick Hahn and Tony La Russa have both used that uh, old maxim? You know, momentum is tomorrow's starting pitcher. They're about to be in the position where they will have momentum every single day for that reason. But when the offense is doing what they've done, that drains that momentum pretty damn quick. Good evening, Juan C. Perez G. from Madrid, Spain. Thank you for joining us. And everybody who's listening to the podcast, please send a message to CHGO underscore White Sox on Twitter. Tell us where you're listening from. And if you're right here watching, please send it through. Um, do you think Rue McClanahan would strike out the White Sox currently? No, I don't. Oh. I don't know if Rue McClanahan is, is alive. Oh, no, she's, she's, she's <laughs> yeah. been dead for a long time. Yeah, so currently, no. I think I think she probably wouldn't be able to, uh, to, to get the ball to home plate. That would be my guess. <laughs> Hey, White Sox will still swing. If you enjoy CHGO, one way to help us out and continue to grow is to download the Points Bet app. I know Points Bet is like, what the fuck is going on? Is is is, is the Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay's uh, uh, unannounced starter for Sunday the <laughs> zombie Rue McClanahan? She would give some good innings though, just solid innings, and the White Sox like, I don't know what's going on. Um, Points Bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. Not only are you going to get two risk-free bets for up to $2,000, but if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, and it gets all of our web content unlocked for you. And You can get a T-shirt like I have on right now with a Brawler Socks T-shirt. If you're listening on the podcast, just go to the website, allchgo.com, and look at the locker room and look at this delicious shirt. It's awesome. And in case you missed it, Oh, sorry. If you have any questions, email pointsbet at pointsbet at allchgo.com and we'll help you out. And in case you miss it, online sign up is available in Illinois. 
can actually download the PointsBet app right now. Register your account from start to finish, all on your phone. You'll be signing up with the fastest sportsbook easier than ever, so you can start living your bet life in seconds. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Zombie Rue McClanahan <laughs> likes striking out White Sox. I'm sorry, Rue McClanahan's family. I'm sorry. I don't want to besmirch your good name. Blanche Devereaux. I said Blanche Dubois before, and now it's Blanche Devereaux from the Golden Girls, if you guys don't know who she is. So not only do we think that Rue McClanahan could join the ranks of the undead, but we think given this new lease on unlife, she would use it to start against the White Sox. Yes. Okay. Yes. Not to see her family, not to, you know, settle scores and such. Just, I won't strike White Sox out. I don't know why Rue McClanahan yeah, very sounds deep like voice Frank, all of a sudden. Frankenstein's monster. Right. Yeah. Strike him out. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Um, <laughs> it's just gone off the rails. We're pretty much done here. Vinny, they're playing three in Tampa, a place that the White Sox usually don't play well. And this team is good. They beat them two out of three. The White Sox beat the Tampa Bay Rays two out of three here at guaranteed rate. What are you expecting this weekend when the White Sox go down there and get Dylan Cease back for one of those starts? Well, I mean, whenever you the White Sox go to Tampa Bay, you have to expect the unexpected. That is where Paul Konerko hit an inside the park home run. Oh, yes. So <laughs> if that happened, anything can happen. Uh, certainly somebody's going to knock a ball off one of them catwalks oh. at some point over the course of three games. And, uh, you know. I hope Wegner's not down, down there. What are you doing, Wegner? <laughs> I think that's when uh, Jose Contreras or Jose Quintana hit a batter and he threw Jose Quintana out of the game. And that's the got the famous rant by Hawk Harrelson. What are you doing, Wegner? So, yes, this weekend, I think the White Sox are going to go down there, at least win one, salvage something. Don't get swept by Tampa. Don't get swept by the whole AL East on this road trip. It's just so depressing. Give us something to watch. I mean, tomorrow I'm not going to watch the game, truth be told. You guys should always, you know, (laughs) take your time, do whatever you need to do because Shane McClanahan, while he's a left-hander and White Sox usually do well versus left-handers, he's a top-of-the-league left-hander that's going to be doing some work against the White Sox. That Saturday and Sunday game, definitely consume those because we got our guys who I don't worry about when they go to the bump in Dylan Cease and Lucas Giolito. Yeah, and I mean, listen, this is is looking to be the time. You know, you hate to say something like this because you have no idea how the next – three months, four months are going to play out. But it looks like this could be kind of a, a, a very important point for the, for the White Sox. You know what I mean? Like, they, are they going to get somebody to, to do something, whether it's on the field or off the field, in the clubhouse, or just a big hit late in the game? They need a spark of some kind. And whether they get it or not is going to be a, a defining, perhaps, uh, moment for this season because you can sit and wait for the guys to hit as long as you want. Eventually, it's going to be too late, and it's not too late yet. But eventually, the waiting game is going to you know take you into a point in the season where you can't go back. And so it's got to be somebody. It's it's got to be somebody. It's got to be you know it's got to be Jose Abreu hitting a a game winning home run. It's got to be. You know, and hopefully it's not another three weeks. Yeah. They're hoping that this would last. But Tim Anderson coming back and really giving a spark. Remember what Aloy Jimenez did oh, yeah. right after he came off the IL last year with that huge home run in Kansas City. A moment like that is 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 needed is needed for this White Sox team right now. I think, and uh, if they don't get it, uh, and this kind of keeps spiraling this way again, it's not really it's not really going down, it's right? It's just staying. In the middle, and that is not something that is going to to win you a division. That is something that's not going to get you to the playoffs. And for a team that wants to win the World Series, it's certainly not something that's going to do that. The remaining schedule in June is tough. The yeah. Rays are over five hundred. The Dodgers are the Dodgers. The Rangers, while you think they might be bad, they're only two games under five hundred. They're better than the White Sox right now, twenty four and twenty six. The Tigers who the White Sox beat the first series. They go back up there, the White Sox do, uh, the middle of June. Then they go to the Houston Astros. We all know how tough that is. Play the Blue Jays again. And remember, join us for the June 22nd tailgate and game where it's 1130. You join us for the tailgate. You get to go to the game later on. We're going to have a great time. We're going to enjoy some beverages, get some food in us, and then go and watch the White Sox beat the Toronto Toronto Blue Jays. Then a four-game set with the Orioles, and then we end the month off with Mike Trout's L.A. Angels of Anaheim in Angel Stadium. So that is a gauntlet. We're in the middle of it. 
beating Tampa Bay two out of three, I think, like Vinny said, it might be a turning point. It might be something like, a, okay, here we go. This is kind of how I felt going into New York. It's like, just don't get swept by the Yankees. And they didn't. They won two out of three by those by in that series, and it was really good to see. They showed fight. I thought that was going to be a turning point for the season. Okay, we got our back. We got Timmy's back. We won a couple games on Sunday night. One on, on national TV. Here we go. And then the White Sox stubbed their toe again. This series is a series they need to attack because hell's coming to breakfast. We're in the middle of hell right now. So White Sox need to strike. I mean, it's pretty nice outside. I don't know if we'd say we're in the oh, middle yeah, we of need hell. To go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like it's, a it's, nice low 70s e- evening here in Chicago. I mean, I get it. August can be kind of sticky, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're going to skip uh, regular spring and then go right to hell again, like White Side, like the Chicago likes to do. So we're pretty much done here. That's Stephen Nicholas. He's our producer. He's been helping us out pretty much for all the shows here at CHGO White Sox. He's a great guy over there. Eat some oh, delicious you. food, make some, oh. make some delicious sandwiches every day, artisan sandwiches. If you ever meet up to Stephen Nicholas, ask him for a sandwich. That's Vinny. He carries Huber. him around with him. Yeah. No just, matter what time of day, if you run into him, Run into him on the streets of Palos Hills or you will, Heights or it's whatever Hills. Those, Hills. It's Palos yeah. Hills. If you run into Steven on the streets of Palos Hills, you know, maybe it's been a fun night for you. You're out at 1.30 in the morning. I don't know when the bars close in Palos Hills, but he'll have a sandwich in his back pocket for you. And that's Vinny Duber. Follow him on Twitter. At Vinny Duber. I don't know your Twitter, Stephen, and you don't tweet anyway. So I I'm off the grid. You can't I wouldn't tell me. people <laughs> to follow you. At Vinny Duber. Follow him for his great work. And go to All CHGO right now and sign up for a membership so you can read everything that Vinny writes about the White Sox. The team is bad. Vinny's great. And he's got good insight for the people who don't get into the clubhouse. He'll give you that all that insight. Me, I'm Herb Lawrence. Don't follow me. But I'm on I'm on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. That's Lawrence spelled backwards and 2-3. So thank you for joining us on this episode of CHGO White Sox. Have a good weekend. We will talk to you. It's me, Vinny, and Janice Scurrio from CHGO Sky, who is going to be joining us for pre and post for that Tampa Bay finale on Sunday morning. So I think a pregame will be starting at 1130, and we'll have the postgame right after. So thank you for joining us on CHGO White Sox. Have a good weekend.